chapter 17 Chronicles chapter 17 in the order of prayer that David prayed verse 20 says there is none like you O Lord and there is no God but you as we have heard with our own ears there is none like you O God and there is no God but you as we have heard with our own ears. There is none like the God that we serve. Mm. There is no one that we can compare to him. And that is mm. why this morning again, we will lift up our voices and give thanks and give praise for his faithfulness, for his goodness, for his love and for his kindness. Amen. Yeah. 
to the only God who is worthy, to the only God who is able, to the only God who is faithful. As we have brought our thanksgiving this morning, I pray that the Lord God Almighty will accept our acts of gratitude in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And as we continue, Holy Spirit of the living God, please reign in our midst in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We will continue morning, with, sir. in today's service with our empowerment prayer. But before we do that, I want to quickly share a little testimony just to lay a foundation for what we're going to do this morning, which is to ask God to empower us and for power. Uh, last week, Thursday, I embarked on a journey. Um, it, it was planned, but to my surprise, my younger brother also was to embark on the same journey and we were supposed to meet at a point. But surprisingly, his own route, for whatever reason, things didn't work according to plan because he was supposed to go there a different route and everybody was a bit apprehensive to why that happened. But for us as human beings, we should plan, but it's God who has a final say. Mm -hmm. And eventually we got to our destination, met, and the only thing that we talked about is uh, hopefully we'll be on the same flight back because of the way things were. And on Sunday, we were coming back and we were, we both just went through boarding pass and everything and only when we got almost started boarding did we ask one another okay so where are you sitting what's your seat number and then i checked my boarding pass and i saw that i was on i was sitting it was three we were three in that row he was 33 i think he was 33a and there was a lady in between and then i was sitting on next to the aisle and for whatever reason, I did ask the lady, I just told her that, do you mind if I sit, if we swap seats so that you can be on the outer? And um, she then looked at me and said, are you guys brothers? And I said, yes. So we swapped seats. And about an hour, 15 minutes into the flight, uh, my brother just said, look, I'm not, I'm not feeling too good. And I said, oh, well, what's, what's, what's is wrong? Just within that little, um, period that just that gap he slumped towards me and i had to push him back and then hit him and he wasn't responding his eyes were closed and then i i just stood up and shouted help help and then two air hostesses rushed towards me i asked for oxygen they got me a little tank and then we put it over his face and i kept just trying to nudge him uh, coincidentally the lady that i told to swap with me was praying just before that flight took off. She was praying intensely. And, and I must say that it caught my attention because she did not only pray, she was also speaking in tongues. And it, it, you don't usually find that happening on, 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 on a flight. She was, it was as if she, she was not conscious of everybody. And it was a packed, that flight was full. She kept praying intensely. And you know, even when we tried to make her move to another seat, she didn't move. If it was someone else, she would have moved because we did say there are seats in, in the front and behind, but she didn't move. She, she kept on praying. And when, when he came to consciousness, he then asked me what happened. And I said, well, I don't know. What did you eat? Because that Saturday night was the only night that we didn't eat together. So I said, what did you have last night? He told me what he had. And I said, well, it's not your tummy. He said, no. I said, well, the only thing I can think about is fatigue. And 
But for me, he was on oxygen for four and a half hours out of a six hour flight. So that was significant. So why, why am I saying this? There are times that we, we just think in our minds that yeah, some, some things are coincidental. I mean, we shouldn't have been on the same flight. That is one. Two, we shouldn't have sat together. I mean, yes, it's, it's good enough to say we were on the same flight, but I could be in seat 23 and he could be in seat 45. And it wasn't planned. But for whatever reason, yeah. we sat next to each other. So this morning, why am I saying this? I, I want us, we're going to be praying and asking for power. Uh, at times, it, it's, it, for some people, it might sound strange. That, I mean, what, 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 when you're talking, about, the power we're asking for, I'm, I'm going to try and explain. But before I do that, I'd like us to read Psalm 60. 8 verse 35 just to lay a foundation on what we're going to be asking and and why we need to ask psalm 68 verse 35 psalm 68 verse 35 it says oh god you are more awesome than your holy places the god of israel is he who gives strength and power to his people that means that there is power available and if we don't ask, we don't receive. Now, what we do with this power is diverse, is left to you. But the fact that you need that power in the journey of life is significant. And as Christians, I wonder if there's anything we can really do successfully outside being empowered by God. Now, can we go to Colossians 2.15? Colossians 2.15. Colossians 2.15, Colossians 2.15. Having disarmed principalities and powers, mm -hmm. he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. So for me, I have said it several times, I come from a background where it, when we were young, there are certain things people say that uh, when when they're saying it, the kind of response you get is, uh, what are they talking about? And to be sincere, that is my background. But as God will have it, the journey of life has proved very funny, meaning that in case we're ignorant of the fact that we need to ask God to help us or to empower us, there are certain things that are pointers to the fact that we can do nothing, absolutely nothing on our own. And that little, that little story that I gave might, might sound, mm, uh, well, but it, it's huge because, like I said, we, we planned, or we both planned the journey, but from two different locations. To be, to, be, to be frank, he was going from the U.S., I was going from here. So there was no reason why we should, at any point, meet apart from the final destination but when he couldn't go through his route he did complain but then again he tried and he got he was able to come through this way we finally met we were not meant to be sitting together but we found ourselves sitting together we we didn't ask why until that happened so as christians all i'm trying to say is we need we need to ask God to empower us. And that power we need for different times and for different periods in our lives. So this morning, I'd like us to ask sincerely because I believe that if we ask, God will grant unto us. So uh, the first prayer is that God, if there's anything in my life that will hinder my prayer this morning, that God forgive me, shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Father, 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 I ask you
this morning. Father, by your mercy, please forgive us in the name of Jesus so that our prayers will not be hindered. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that you will forgive us and look upon us with mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brethren, I want us to <clears throat> sincerely seek the face of God this morning because we need, we need, we need power, we need strength. Uh, this power is not the is not uh, you, you it's not physical it's not it's not it's not going to show in the kind of muzzle or in the build that you have but there's certain significant things that will will just make you make people know that you're different why did i say this the lady i talked about after all this she still moved to the next to the next row but there was just an aisle and along the line she looked at me and said there's something about both of you that naturally I would have moved away from that role. But for whatever reason, something just told me to stay there. And, and I, you, it, didn't, it didn't really dawn on me properly till after I sat down on my own and I was looking at the different scenarios that might have played out, mm -hmm. assuming I wasn't there. And like I said, all I did was pray for that journey. Now, again, to show that we need power and strength, the beginning of that journey, I wouldn't have gone at all. I mean, the, the pastor knew I went somewhere to pick up a document. Uh, they told me I couldn't pick up the document. I turned back and I was like, well, I'm going back home. And the pastor said, no, you can't come all this way. Press a bit. And I picked up my phone, called someone. We went to the person and he said, well, I'll do this for you. And we did it. And I got that document. Like I said, personally, I wouldn't have, I, I would have turned back. And all that happened, meaning that there was a reason for all that happened. And if, if it was not through prayers, it probably wouldn't have been the way it is. So this morning, I want us to endlessly ask God, to empower us for this journey of life, for the different things and for the different places where we find ourselves. We need power. Shall we pray this morning? Father, in God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray this morning. In the name of Jesus, I need the Holy Spirit of the living God, I pray that you will empower us, I pray. In the name of Jesus, because without your power, we can do nothing. Without you, we can't get to this journey of life. So, Lord, we pray that afresh and anew this morning, Father, empower us. In the name of Jesus, Father, empower me. In the name of Jesus, Father, empower me, Lord, empower me. Holy Spirit of the living God, empower me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. It's probably not, it, we probably don't understand it, but we'll go again to the story of the 12 disciples when they were waiting in, in, in the upper room. And God said, tarry here until you, you the Holy Spirit come upon you. And from, the, from that history, we found out that as soon as they were empowered, they went out and they did extraordinary exploits. What does this tell us? It tells us that as Christians, we need power. Like I said, it's not, it's not the physical thing that people can see, but it's something that when we have, when we go into places, people notice a change, either in the way we walk, Either how things happen, I cannot explain it because it, it, it's diverse. I mean, it, but I know that there's something extraordinary that we need in this journey of life to make us stand out. So this morning, for us, for all of us, whether we're young, whether we're in our mid age, we need power. So I want us to pray endlessly and ask that God empower me afresh. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, my name of Jesus, that you empower me afresh. In the name of Jesus, Father, empower me anew. In the name of Jesus, I desire more of your power. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, empower me. Holy Spirit of the living God, empower me. Empower me afresh, O Lord. Empower me anew, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord God Almighty, empower me. In the name of Jesus. 
I desire more of your power. I desire more of you. Father, fill me, O Lord. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your strength. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit of the living God, please fill me with your power. Please fill me with your strength. In the name of Jesus, Father, empower me. Empower me, O Lord. Empower me, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father, empower me, O Lord. As the body of Christ, Lord, we pray that you will empower In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I remember a, a story in the Bible of the, is it mad men of gathering? Where these people were people that people avoided. Mm. I mean, they were, they, were, it, they were known to be evil. Mm. Yet, when they, when they encountered power, they succumbed. Mm -hmm. So, this it just goes to show that i i don't know your story i know mine and if there's anything that i desire at this time or this moment in my own journey it is that power that can make one stand out mm -hmm. we all know that electricity is not something that we can see but nobody tolls with it no matter how strong, even the strong, strong men. I've, I've seen people do competition of strongest men and all that, but you, I've never seen people say, okay, we'll see someone that would hold on to electricity or the voltage to see how strong they can withstand it. So we need power. As Christians, we need it. And, and like I said, this power can come in different forms. Some of us aspire to get to a peak of our career. And without power without without power not not mental capabilities now because we are endowed with that obviously but there's something different something that will just make people know that you know what this person carries something this is not normally how people will mm -hmm. and, and why am i saying this i'm saying this so that we all understand why we need to do this and we need to not not just a one-off we need to do this continuously just last week i was listening to i, I mean we all heard it the, the, uh, uh, the former prime minister he did he did well but you see one deal one deal and what he thought was that he was looking after his own people and his family but that now has turned has become like a sour grip mm. So as Christians, for us to be able to, I mean, success is diverse. Success means a lot different things for us. But for me, these are some of the pain points that I see and, and, and has made me um, um, taking out time to say, you know what? Regardless of the kind of English you speak and how you people see you, there are ingredients that we need in our lives mm. that will make a difference. And one of it is power. And there's no other person that can give this power other than God. So this morning, if that is the only prayer we'll pray, and then we'll, we, will, we will close for this empowerment session, let us ask for power, that God empower me afresh. Shall we pray? Father, in, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that Father and God, you empower me. I desire, I desire the strength of power in the name of I Jesus. Father, empower me. Father, empower me. Father, empower me in the name of Jesus. As the body of Christ, Lord, we pray that you empower us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, empower me. Father, empower me. In the name of Jesus, fill me, with Lord, of flesh. Fill me, with Lord, of you. In the name of Jesus, Father, empower me. Empower us, Lord. Empower us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, empower us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, empower us, Holy Spirit of the living God. Father, empower us. In the name of Jesus, Father, fill me with your power. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our children. Let us pray for the young ones. All of us are young, obviously, but some are not as young as others. Let us pray that some of these things that we are talking about for some it's not late but we're we're, we're finding out that we need, there are certain things that if we had earlier the journey of life would probably be easier 
it's not too late. There's no time that you 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 that the Holy Spirit or you're empowered that you cannot do exploits. But the, the journey of life can 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 be stressless, so to speak, in, in, in the form of the kind of things that you encounter and how you maneuver your life. Mm -hmm. So let us ask that God touch all our young ones yeah. so that they, they have an encounter with you early in life. Mm -hmm. Shall we pray? Well, the God, name God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for all our children, O Lord, that are touched them, and our young ones, that they encounter them, O Lord, that they receive your touch, that they will meet you early in their lives, in the name of Jesus, like Timothy, O Lord, like Paul, like Samuel, like Jesus. We pray for them, Lord, this morning. We commit them to you, O Lord. And we pray, Father, Lord, that you to will them. touch them, touch them, that they will encounter you. Lord, in minister to them, Lord. That they will encounter you. Lord, and encounter be their Savior, their Lord. Life and be their Lord, O Lord. Our their children love are your Lord. In the name of Jesus, fill Father, them with your fire, with your fear, children, with your word. That you touch them, O Lord. Implant in your interest in them, O Lord. Lord. we pray that in our children and our young ones will come to know you. That they will come to know you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Let us commit the rest of this week, the rest of this month, in fact, the rest of this year into God's hand, that God will direct our path. Amen. If with 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 that, we know that we're 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 covered. It's, it's like a sat nav. I mean, if you don't know the way, if you just put that on, you 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 get to where your destination. And that's how that's that's what God is like, or the Holy Spirit is like in our lives. Let us pray that God, I commit the rest of this week, this new week into your hand. I commit the rest of this month. I commit the rest of this year into your hand. Father, guide me. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus and our Father and our God, we commit the journey of this new week to you. We commit the journey of the rest of the month of April and the rest of this year. And our journey, oh Lord, individually and as families and households. Father, we pray that you will guide us in the name of Jesus, that you will guide us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please be with us in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will be the captain In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let us commit our country, this country, into God's hand. And let's remember Nigeria and the world at large, that God will reign. Amen. That God will reign. Amen. I mean, whatever that means, that is what we need. Amen. Peace in various countries, good leadership, and, and that we, with God reigning, it means that we have dominion. We'll be able to take our rightful place. Amen. So let us pray that God take over the affairs of men in the world Amen. today. Shall we pray? Father, in the name, in the name of, the of the Lord Jesus, our Father and our God, our we Father desire your reign in the United country, Kingdom, in Nigeria, in kingdom, Father, in the world at large, Lord, we pray that your kingdom will come, that your kingdom Christ, will not be exalted Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, Lord we pray that your kingdom, your kingdom be exalted, that your kingdom be on earth, that your kingdom be with us in the name of Jesus. Father, let, let your, your spirit reign. Let your spirit reign. Let the Holy Jesus. Spirit take over Holy the Spirit art of men, the art of in leaders. The in the Jesus. name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that you will reign so that your reign peace will abound in the mighty name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, in reign. Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our Heavenly Father and our God, we thank you once again for the privilege of being able to come under your throne of grace, to ask, to seek your face, to worship, to hear your word. Our Father and our God, we pray that this morning you speak to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, because we've asked for your power, Lord, we pray that you visit us with your power this morning like never before in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, from the youngest to the oldest, Lord, we pray that we'll have a special encounter with you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, if there be anything in our lives that can hinder our prayer, our request, our thanksgiving this morning from being acceptable and answered, Lord, we pray that you forgive us in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, we commit the rest of this service unto you, Lord. We pray that you speak to us. Amen. Father, as many as have come with one need or the other, Lord, we pray that you meet them at the point of your, 
They are Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we commit the rest of this new week, the new month, and the year unto you. Lord, guide us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answer prayers because Thank we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Take this stage, Lord, and off your way, and just to bless you, and nothing more. When you're done, please take the glory. I'm satisfied, just to see you glorified. Take the stage, Lord. Take the stage, Lord. And I'm have your way. I'm, I'm just your vessel. And nothing more. When you're done. Just to see you glorified. I want you to go ahead and talk to God this morning. Father, touch me. Holy Spirit, touch me afresh. Take charge of my life. Open your mouth and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the Most High God, we invite you afresh this morning. Touch me, O oh Lord. Touch my tongue. I am just a vessel, Lord. Lord, Lord, be glorified this morning. Take control. Take, control. take, over. take charge, O Lord. Of my life. Take control. Take, control. take charge, O Lord. In the name Touch me afresh. Touch your people. Minister through me this morning. Let there be power. Let there be an encounter in the name of Jesus. Let there be demonstration of your power. Let there be healing through your word in the name of Jesus. Through your word this morning, let there be signs and wonders in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch your people. Save your people this morning. And deliver your people this morning and let your name in Lord be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. And so it shall be in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Take control today and forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Start in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let that be a great turn around in our life today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And at the end of the day, let your name be glorified. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Wonderful name. We are prayed. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. God bless you. I'm so glad this morning. Somebody is watching us from uh, UAE. Amen. 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 God bless you, Brother Kenny. Amen. We met when I traveled last uh, to Nigeria. It was in January. We met in Nigeria and we were king number. We talk, and he's a good Christian. In fact, he's a pastor. <laughs> Though he's hiding for me, but I found that God bless you Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we go into the world today, I just want to do a bit of recap to what we said last week. Uh, we started a short series last week, which is going to end next Sunday, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So last week, we, we talked about the person of the Holy Spirit. And we said that is the third person of the Trinity, that without the, the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. He told us that, as we all know, Jesus waited for him. Also, he mandated the apostles to do the same thing. I told us, Holy Spirit should be the most important person in our life and the most closest person in our life as a believer. Shouldn't be our friends, shouldn't be our family, shouldn't be our parents, even shouldn't be our spouse. Holy Spirit should be, as a believer, the most closest at the most important 
person in our life. Holy Spirit is God omniscient. It means God who knows all things and who know all men. Holy Spirit should be our priority. May the Lord bless us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we want to talk about the purpose of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to touch a bit of his power. Next week, we are going to round it up with the power of the Holy Spirit, which happened to be our Revival Sunday. I pray Holy Spirit will help us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's open our Bible to the book of Romans. Because of our time, I will just read verse 14. You can go ahead and read, read from verse 1 to the end after the service. But we just read verse 14. If you have your Bible with you, please have your pen ready and your notepad so you can jot some things. Romans 8 verse 14 says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit there, those are sons of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of the Lord, these are sons and daughters of God. Amen. I pray this will we'll breathe upon his word this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you look carefully at that word led, it's talking about leader. Am I right? So I want you to see Holy Spirit today as our leader. Those who are led by the Holy Spirit, these are sons and daughters of God. In John 15, from 1 to 8, we read there, Jesus told us that without the Holy Spirit, without him, we can do nothing. So he's telling us here that unless we can succumb, we can bow to his leading, we can do nothing. Holy Spirit is indispensable leader, indispensable partner, very necessary, somebody, something that you can't do without. The Holy Spirit is indispensable partner in the pursuit of every kingdom assignment. Whatever you want to do, you need Holy Spirit. Like our brother was saying, without the power of God, you can do nothing. Education has done well. This is the time for revelation. And you can only have revelation through who? Through all the Holy Spirit. He's the one that know all things. So I want you to have in your mind this morning the word partner. I will be using the word partner very well. So we, we must be a prolific partner as well with the Holy Spirit. But he is our leading partner, indispensable partner that you cannot do without. As we know, Jesus waited for the Holy Spirit and he mandated also the apostles to do the same. And the world is for us as well. Let's read Acts 2, 39. And I want us to pay attention. I will try and take my time this morning so we can understand. Acts 2, 39. Jesus waited. The apostles waited. What about us? Because some Christian these day they believe speaking in tongues or talking about Holy Spirit is thing of the past. Let's see what the word of God is saying to us. Acts chapter 2 and verse, let me read 36 to 39. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were caught to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins 
and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39, for the promise is for you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord we called. Amen. Amen. In that verse 39, the promise here is for four groups of people. Please write it down. The promise there, the promise of the Holy Spirit is for four, is for four different groups. Number one, please pay attention to your Bible. The promise is to you, I believe, Peter is referring to people who are present in Jerusalem that day when he was preaching. Number two, he said the promise to your children, I believe, is referring to their children as well, people who are listening to his sermon. Category three, and to all who are far off. If you read, at chapter 1, verse 8, when Jesus asked them to wait in Jerusalem until they received the Holy Spirit. He said, when the Holy Spirit come, you witness for me where? In Samaria, in Judea, and to the uttermost. uttermost. Yes, I believe he's talking about them. So the last category is, is horse. As many as the Lord we oh. called. Now, take your mind back to Romans 8, 14, that's where, that we are read. As many as are led. Are you with me? Can we see? As many as are led, these are sons and daughters of God. And here we read that as many as the Lord we called. So Holy Spirit is our leading partner in whatever business you are undertaking. If you cannot succumb, if you cannot subject yourself to the leading of the Holy Spirit, you are wasting your time. Whatever you want to do, anything, you must ask him to navigate the journey for you. As many as are called by the Spirit of God, these are sons and the daughters of the Holy Spirit of God. So what, what must we do? Number one, we must be united with the Holy Spirit. If you read Amos 3.3, 3, it says, can two work together except they agreed? Why? Because unity is the backbone of the Trinity. I said that last week, that we are so important to God, even in the creation of the world, Genesis 1, 26, it was when God was about to make man, he called, let us. That is when uh, Trinity came together. It was God that said, let there be light. And there was light. God made firmament. God made light. I believe God can do it on his own. It's almighty God. But God is showing us that without God the head, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are one. But as we know that Jesus was on earth for some time, now he has gone. This is the time for Holy Spirit that we cannot do without Holy Spirit. And the Lord give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So Trinity, they work together. Unity is their hallmark for them. It's their backbone. If you look at what Trinity very well, you realize it sounds like three. Unity. Three. It means God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let's read Acts 2 verse 1. Acts 2 verse 1 says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord, in one Please, what can you see there? Unity. They were united. So you are you and Holy Spirit must be united. You must have the same opinion, the same interest. If Holy Spirit is going to be, you cannot be going to hate. 
If Holy Spirit is going to A, you cannot be going to B. The interests must be united. There must not be division between you and the Holy Spirit who lives in you. Let me use this illustration between dri driver and the passenger who controls the driving. You can answer the uh, uh, you can answer by yourself. I want to hear our voice, please. Between the driver and the passenger, who controls the driving? Driver. The driver. And that's it. The right answer is the driver. So Holy Spirit must be the one driving the vehicle of our destiny. He's our leading partner. I want you to have that word in your mind. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. May the Lord appoint you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said on that day, many will come. Say, in your name, we delivered. In your name, we raised the dead. In your name, we cast out the dead. Jesus will say, I don't know you. May this never be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's our leading partner. Write this down. Holy Spirit has not come to take a side. He has come to take charge. God has not given us the Holy Spirit to take a side, S-I-D-E, but to take charge of our life, to take charge of our destiny. If you cannot allow him to rule you, to lead you, I don't know what you are doing. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You must be led by the Spirit of God. Many of us today, particularly Christian, what we are doing now, in fact, even most people in ministry, are you being led by the Spirit of God? Where you are living? Who asks you to live there? We must be led. You want to travel. You don't bother to ask Holy Spirit. You want to do this. You don't bother to do you must be led, you must be guided, you must be shepherded by the spirit of the living God. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the one that can lead you to your promised land. You don't know the way. And that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you allow him to lead you if you allow him to lead you, then you must remain, remain flexible in his hand. Why you must be flexible? Because you can resist the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit can be resisted. You can resist Holy Spirit. You, yourself, you can, you can hinder him. Yes. And that's the problem. God gave us free will as human beings. God is not a dictatorship. Assuming God dictates what to do, maybe things will are better than this today. <laughs> you want to go to A, God say, no, you have to go to B. No, no, but God is not like that. He loves us so much that he gives us that free will. When the Israelites were coming out of Widow, and he told them, this is Romans 6 and 16, that now you are going out. I've placed before you life and death, but I encourage you to choose life. God could have said, I demand, I ask you, I commanded you to do what? Take life. But said, no. I'll play both in your, in your way. But choose life. So that free will is what is causing problem today. It's what is call, call, causing division today. Because we want to do our own thing. We have our own interest. Forgetting that he is the one that knows all things. He knows all men. I've told people this, and I'm saying it again. You see people in church, you meet people everywhere, and they are nice to you, they are buying down, they are giving. That doesn't connote they are <laughs> good people. No. It has got to the time, this is the end time, that you check every spirit. If you are going to walk with them, if you are going to make them your friends, go and pray. It is scriptural. Test every spirit. 
the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Another thing we must do in our work with Holy Spirit, don't try and understand him, just obey. By trying to understand what he's doing in your life, you'll get it wrong. Because most of the time, what the Spirit of God will tell you doesn't make sense. Ridicule things. Things you cannot fathom together is what he will tell you to do. Only people can tell you, park your car and start walking. Does that make sense? Don't go out today and you are supposed to go to work and you are not the, you are not the boss of yourself. You have people to report to and God is say, telling you, I just want you to say at home today, you don't know what is going at work. So don't try to understand him. Just obey him. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 to 14. First Corinthians 2. I'll read. First Corinthians 2, 12 to 14 says, so, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the but natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can be known them, because they are spiritually discerned. Can you see? So we, we, we cannot try and understand him. All we can do is to obey him. And when we obey the Holy Spirit, what is going to happen? Number one, he will give you the life of Christ. Let's read Romans 8, 4. Romans 8, 4. In John 10, 10, Jesus told us he has come to give us life and life abundantly. Romans 8, 4. Anyone? You can read that for me. In order that 11, please. Romans 8, 11. 11. Yeah. And if the spirit of him mm. who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, Amen. he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Can you see that? Through his spirit who lives in you. I pray his spirit will give us life today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So by allowing Holy Spirit to lead you in all things, not in one thing or some things, and one of the things we struggle with as human beings, our finances. Some people can pray and fast, can do anything. But when Holy Spirit is prompting, prompting them that you see that brother, go and bless him with 10 pounds. And they say, ah, no, that is not the Holy Spirit. No, it's the Holy Spirit. We must allow his prompting in everything. And most of the things that we are not happy about, allow him. He will reward you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, another thing is that you will receive the winning wisdom. Let's read Acts 6, 9 to 11. It's talking about the King Stephen there. Let's see what happened. Acts 6, verse 9 to 11. You can read if you are there. Opposition arose, mm -hmm. however, from members of the synagogue of the free freed men, mm. as it, it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria as well, as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia, these men began to argue with Stephen, but they could not stand up against his wisdom mm -hmm. or the spirit by whom he spoke. And I said, but they could, but they will not be able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Winning wisdom. 
when we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we allow him to lead us, he will give us winning wisdom that people cannot resist. Even you yourself, you wouldn't understand. He will just give you. I've seen it in my life many times. You don't even know what to say. You are about to speak and he will drop a verse in your heart. He will drop a song in your heart. He will draw a prayer point in your heart. And I know many of us, we usually experience that. And what you must do is do what? Just glow with the flow. As long as you go with the flow, it will keep coming. Winning wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Holy Spirit will empower you to do good. Acts 10, 38. Acts 10, 38. Our God. Our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him, doing good. It's the Holy Spirit that can lead us to every good work. He will empower you to do good. And you and I will do good in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We will do well and do great in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our leading partner. Another thing, he will reveal all things to you. Revelation, 1 Corinthians 2.10. And that is what we need. You need revelation. I need revelation. Many things we are struggling about, many things that we are lacking today is because we are yet to see from the Holy Spirit. If you can see it, you will have it. God told Abraham, look, as far as you can see, it's yours. So if you can see it in the spirit, you will have it. It's a matter of time. Are you there? First Corinthians 2.10. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. He has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things. Yes. Even the deep things of God. Can you see? He has revealed it to us. You will know all things. You will know what to do. He will direct you. He will speak to you. May we not lack his leading in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I say, may we not lack his leading in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we must learn how to wait upon him. We must learn how to do what? Wait. How to wait upon him. Isaiah 40. We must learn. In all things, we must be patient. To receive the promise, we are told that we must have faith and be patient. So we must know how to wait for him. Isaiah 40. We can read from 30, I believe. Even youth grow tired and weary, mm -hmm. and young men stumble and fall. But those who wait in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary. Let's take our time there. Those who wait upon the Lord. Will renew their strength. Mm. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. Amen. They will walk and not be faint. Hallelujah. Amen. Waiting is very hard for everyone, including believers. You want to do something, God is saying, wait. <laughs> people are moving ahead. God is telling you, wait. Even people will tell you, God is telling you to wait. You wait. Are you the one serving God? Even your pastors can say that to you. Care is not taken. Now, what are you doing? And one of the things that I've learned is this. To go to your pastor, go to your senior pastor, somebody that you reference in faith, and you are saying God is saying, and they are saying God is saying as well. If you understand what I mean, we need the wisdom of God. Because they will tell you, so you are telling me God is speaking to you than me. But God is talking to you. That's why the Bible says those who know their God, they will do exploit. You must know your God. You must know your God. 
And whatever your God says to you, you must settle with it. Those who wait upon the Lord. Waiting is hard, but you must exercise it. You must do it by reading the word of God. The promise of God is for you and as many as God will call. That's the secret. God has called you in your own profession. It's your calling. Wait upon the Lord. Read the word, have faith, and pray and fast. God will speak to you. He will reveal things to you. I've seen it in my life, and I know many of you have seen it. God revealing things. I had a testimony two days ago. A woman lost her husband. And after some time, she was looking for a document that she has to do. She find a document, but document need a password. <laughs> and the husband is no more. And the, the woman prayed. And while she was sleeping, God said, in, in form of her late husband, but that is spirit of God. Mm. That go and check this place under the clothes. Oh, you, you were there, and the woman found it. That's it. No lawyer will find that. No medical doctor will help you to find that. Even pastor will fall and fail. Look at that Bible verse. Come again to that verse forty, verse thirty. Even the youth. Even youth grow tired and weary. Youth. Who, and youth, we all know that we are full of what? Of energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a youth. <laughs> all of us, we are youth. And we are full of energy. But what we're saying, time will come. They will get tired. What you believe will finish. Your education, your knowledge, your wisdom. Even God himself will allow you to fail so you can trust in him. He said, my glory, I will not share with mm -hmm. anyone. So we must wait upon the Lord. The promise is for you. This is the word. Until you receive the promise, keep on waiting. Say to yourself, I will wait, I will wait until, I receive the promise. until I receive the promise. No, you must wait. And the promise there is not just one thing. The promise connotes so many things, embedded so many things. That's why Jesus said, pray until your joy is full. If you are satisfied with your condition now, then you can stop. Even you can stop serving God. But if you are not satisfied, you know you are no, you, you have not discovered yourself, you are you have not fulfilled, then keep waiting. Keep on waiting upon the Lord. He will renew your strength in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray and fast. Study the word. Holy Spirit is the spirit of holiness. It's a spirit of grace, a spirit of faith. You are praying and you don't have faith in God. To take the promise, we must have faith in God. These are the things we need to do. Above all, we must obey him. This is around me 28. If you are there, you can read for me. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully how many things? All things. All things. Command, commandment which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. I believe, I expect you to say amen. 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 Because you obey the voice of the Lord. Amen. Underline that word because. Not because you pray. <laughs> Do we see? Not because we pray. Not because we are Christian. Take a look at it. Unbelievers, people who are here to confess Jesus is Lord, are they not being blessed? Yeah. They are blessed. 
Many of them, they are enjoying harmony in their, in their home because they obey what they believe. I don't, I don't know whatever, what they believe, but they obey. And it's working for them. So when I read this, I read, it's not a matter of prayer now. A pastor wrote a book, he said, prayer is not the answer. If you don't read the book, <laughs> you will say, what kind of topic is this? And it's true. Many times prayer is not the answer. Here, yeah, if you obey me, then this blessing will come to pass. That's the word of God. We cannot take anything out of the word of God and we cannot add to it. It's the word of God. Jesus says in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. You shall know the word of God and you shall do it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's read Acts. Let's see what Jesus did. Acts chapter 1. Please help me read Acts chapter 1, just verse 1. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all the Jesus began both to do and do what? And teach. To do and teach. So it's not about preaching or teaching. It's about doing. So obedience is the most important thing in our work with the Holy Spirit, with our work with God. Like I said, many of us, we do pray. I know, and we fast. Even we pay tithes. We give offering. We are good Christians, but we don't fully obey our leading partner. For as many as are called, I want you to go home today and ponder on that Bible verse. Led. This, that's the qualification. You are not the one to bless yourself. If you can bless yourself, you don't need to pray to God to bless you. If you can protect yourself, you don't need God. If you can heal yourself, you don't need a healer. If you can save yourself, you don't need a savior. But if you need those things, then you need to obey God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall obey you. We must obey as we round up today. We must obey Holy Spirit. Through our pastor, through our leader. That's why I said many times in church, and I'm saying it today, not every church is for you. You must be led to stay in the church. If you are not convinced that this is your church, go and pray, brother. Go and pray, sister. Otherwise, you are just one of them. You are just a multitude. If it's not your land, you sow a seed, the seed will not germinate. He says some people sow on the mountain. What happened? It dried off. Some people sow by the wayside. What happened? Only those who sow on good land, you must be led. To travel, you must be led. To marry, you must be led. Whatever you want to do as believers, be led by the Spirit of God, by learning how to wait upon the Lord. Look at Luke 18 verse 1. You should have known the Holy Spirit are take over, taking over now. All this is not in my notes anymore. As he's talking to me, I'm preaching now. Luke 18, verse 1. Then Jesus told his disciples mm -hmm. a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Mm. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice. Where I need today is verse 4. I want to show something. Grant me justice against my adversary. Mm -hmm. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself. Please let me read New King James Version. Let somebody open. If you have King James Version, I believe what I mean, you have that. Please open First Peter 
verse 5. You are going to read verse 10. I will read Luke 18, 4. Then you will read 1 Peter 5, verse 10. Yes, the man said, Jesus said, and he would not for a while. Pay attention to that word, a while. But afterward, he said to him within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man. That man was, was truthful. Christian, we need to be careful. Jesus said, if you think you are standing, be careful. You know, Jesus said here, this man fear me not or fear me. The man also confirmed that though I don't fear God, I fear me. Do you understand that? Many of us will not confess to that. He himself confirmed it. I don't fear God, I don't, I don't fear any man. Now let's re read 1 Peter 5, 5 verse 10. But may the God of all grace yes. call us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while, perfect. Stop there, sir. Stop there, sir. After you have suffered a while, because many of us, because we are going through, we thought God is against us. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. He's leading you somewhere. You can only go through that pain for a while, for a season. For a time, it's not forever. Go on, sir. After you have suffered a while, through Holy Spirit, you'll be what? Perfect. God will perfect you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Establish. He will establish us. Amen. Amen. Strengthen. He will strengthen us. Amen. And settle you. And he will settle us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will be settled in your Canaan land in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's leading us to our promised land. So we must not relax along the way. We must wait upon the Lord day and night. The Lord will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to pray. We want to tell God this morning, the Holy Spirit, take absolute control of my life. Help me to yield to you always. Like I said, oftentimes, some of the things he's asking you to do is ridiculous. But when you are sensitive enough and consciousness is enough of his word, you all you have to say is according to your word. Be like Peter in Luke 5. Peter was a fisherman, a professional one. Jesus was not a fisherman. And you are telling a professional to throw his net again. He said, we've labor all night. I know this work. It's my work. But according to your word. And that's what we should be doing. Though you are not willing to go that way, but said according to your word and do it. And remember, he's a rewarder of those who diligently, those who obey him, you will not miss your reward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I want us to pray, Holy Spirit, take total control of my life Amen. from today. Help me to yield to your voice. Open your mouth and pray. Father, Father in, in the name, name of Jesus, Jesus Holy, Spirit of Holy Spirit from today, take total control of, take total my, control of my life. Of Jesus, according to in the name, name of Jesus, take total control of, take my, life. Total control of my life. Jesus. Total Father, control. God, I pray. Take Help me to yield to your voice. My life Help me to Jesus, obey you in all things. To give myself to in the mighty Lord, name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. To give all my will. To give all my will, my in ways. The name of Jesus, to give myself Jesus, away to you. Control of my life. In the name, name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit of the living God. Please pray that prayer very well. Ask for his take help. Total control, oh Lord, take total control. Jesus. Father Lord, take total control. Of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray. That you take total control. Thank you, Jesus. In, Jesus. in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. You are going to tell God to manifest himself through you, God's character. When, in out of our apostle that we read, verse 6, when they need people in church to take affairs of the church forward, he said they should look for six, seven people of good character of reputable character and um, Stephen was among them and that's the help of the Holy Spirit so we are going to pray Holy Spirit help me manifest yourself in me help me 
to emulate God's character. Open your mouth and pray. Father, in, in the, the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Holy Spirit of the I living pray, God, I pray that you will manifest you yourself in manifest me yourself. in the name of Jesus. Help, Help me, me to emulate to the character, emulate God, character of God, the character, character of Jesus, of in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. Holy Spirit of Help the living God, I pray that you will manifest your servant, yourself in me. Manifest, manifest yourself, O Lord. Lord. In to my emulate ways, God's character in the name of Jesus. Help in the mighty to name of you. Jesus. Holy Spirit of the living in God, the help, me to name of Jesus. help me to help me to emulate you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, help us. Thank Lord. you. Father. Help us to emulate you. I want you to pray help this prayer as you round up. Let your wisdom flow through me. Father, let your wisdom flow. The winning wisdom that we saw in the life of Stephen. Let your wisdom flow. Let it flow through me, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. Winning wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ask for the wisdom of God. Flow through them. Let your wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. In the name of Jesus. Father, fill me with wisdom. In the name of Jesus. Make me wise, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Fill me. In the name of Jesus. Wisdom fill me. Fill me, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Now I want you to bless your new week as we go. Father, Lord, whatever you want God to do. That decree a thing and it shall be established. In the name of Jesus. Decree joy. This is our month of increase. In the name decree of Jesus. increase we upon yourself. Upon there is you. power in the name of Jesus. Upon our and if you in believe, the name of Jesus, Father, you shall receive. Bless our decree. In the name of Jesus. Decree joy. Bless our decree fear. healing. Bless our lives. Decree in promotion. Jesus. Lord, decree God's intervention. Decree God's, God's visitation. In the mighty in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Now I want us to pray for the body of Christ. That we cancel all division. That we know division among churches. Body of Christ as a whole. We come against spirit of division. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to pray that prayer for every home. We come against every spirit of division. In every home. In our marriages. No division. Among husband and wife. And around us, no division that there shall be no in the mighty name of Jesus. Only your love, only your word will reign in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you praise. Now go ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Give him praise. Thank you. Exalt his holy name. Adore him this day. Thank you, Father. He is Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's King of Glory. Thank you for speaking. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, King of Glory. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you. May your name forever be praised. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you.
Amen. We give God all the glory for today's service. And we want to thank God for your lives and thank God for giving each and every one of us the opportunity to fellowship. This is Divine Assembly Ministries where destinies are lifted, safeguarded, and protected. Empowered. Amen. Empowered. Amen. Amen. Uh, services will remain as they are for now. On Tuesday, we meet for your prayers at 8 p.m. on Facebook. And those who have the opportunity to join by phone can call the numbers. They are on the e-flyer that we normally share. On Friday, we look at the word of God together and pray. Empowerment Hour also at 8 p.m. And on Sunday, we meet for service, um, worship service, as we are doing today. And God will bless us in Jesus' name. If we have people around us who are unchurched, who would like a place of worship, please refer them to churches around you or to us if they are near to us. And we are believing God and planning to go back to a physical building by the beginning of next month. By the grace of God, most of us have had our first jobs and the, we, have, we have big enough space to make sure that we are well spaced out and follow the rules like, and guidance. The Lord will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our outreaches are as we do them. If you are interested right, in okay. joining, please okay. let us know. If you are a tighter and you, or you want to give offering, please ask for the church account number if you don't have it. If you do, please do as the Lord lays upon your heart. And the Lord will bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we all unmute ourselves and take our Bible? Let's read Psalm 23 together. Our brother from UAE, we like to hear your voice. Please unmute yourself. God bless you, Brother Kenny. Brother David, you meet yourself. Psalm 23. Let's read 1 to 6. And after that, we just shout hallelujah and go. Are we ready? Let's read. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He takes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He, he, restores he restores my soul. My soul. He, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his, for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your Lord and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. May the Lord help us to keep our promises in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! Well, with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Bye. God bless Bye. you. God bless you. Ma. God bless you.